person who thinks all the time has nothing to think about except thought. He loses touch with reality. A good servant, but a bad master, and lives in a world of illusion. And all so-called civilized people have increasingly become crazy and self-destructive. Welcome back to Sledgehammer Horror, guys. I am Ken Sledge. And I'm Ashley Sledge. And let's talk horror. So today we are going to be talking about April Fool's Day. We are going to talk about what we like about the original, what we like about the remake, and then we are going to verse them against each other. You ready to get into it? Let's get to the original. So yes, we are going to start off by talking about 1986's April Fool's Day, the original, the scenes that we like about it, and a little bit of the plot points that go along with the movie. Would you like to start us off? Yeah, so it starts off, they're at a, um, at, at a dock getting ready to board a ferry to go mm -hmm. over to an island for a weekend. It's like a group of friends, yeah. um, and they're all kind of kind of goofy messing around. And speaking of which, this is where we get to meet goofy-ass Harvey. Yeah. I absolutely love this scene. Whoa! Hi, Harvey Hal Edison Hi. Jr. Uh, but please call me Hal. Only my folks call me Harv, and I just can't stand it. Um, so then they're on the boat, get, you know, they're moving over to the island mm -hmm. and messing around on the boat. They're playing a knife game, throwing a knife, and this is where Biff, if you guys know Biff from <laughs> Back to the Future, Back to the Future, um, calls the guy a butthead. <laughs> <laughs> he says, "I'm, I'm not. I don't want to play anymore." And um, the guy throws the knife, and he grabs it and throws it at him, and it and it stabs him. And it looks super real, but it is just an April Fool's joke. Pops out of the water with it. Yeah. You're looking for this? Um, well, they finally get to the island, and the helper gets off the boat to go try to reel it in, lock it in, and um, the boat runs him over. Yeah. Completely crushes his face. Which this, looks really cool. Yeah. I love this scene, and everybody's freaking out. You know, oh my god, this guy just got crushed. He's freaking out. The cops come, end up taking him back to the mainland using the boat they have there. So now their boat that they have there is gone. Yes. So um, one good thing about this movie, though, is some of the April Fool's pranks that they pull on each other. Yes. I mean, they're a little cheesy. Mm -hmm. Like, we're going to eat all the beans. How are we going to feel after these beans? <laughs> or... You have clips like, everybody cheers, take a drink of your glass. Oh, <laughs> your shit's all over you now, April Fool's. So, um, but things do eventually start to take a dark twist. They do, however. Um, for example, one of the guys is in the boathouse and he you just see him get taken. Mm -hmm. And you don't know where he is until the next day when a couple are making out. And, you know, the, um, the boathouse is rocking back and forth and you see his dead body mm -hmm. underneath the the um, boathouse. At first I was like, damn, they're really getting into it if the house is rocking this. If the boathouse is rocking, well, they don't come water. and rock it. Yeah. <laughs> well, then we're talking about my good buddy Tom Wilson, Biff. Um, he's going out and he's trying to find the guy that was under. They don't know if he was playing a prank yeah. or if somebody really killed him. So he's out looking for either that guy or whoever could be responsible. Which they're always on their toes because they play so many pranks on each right. other. It's like what's real and what's not. Right. Well, as he's walking, he gets in a trap, like an old school cartoon trap, wraps around his leg, picks him up. There's also a snake there, and he tells that snake he's as useful as a um, screen door on a battleship. <laughs> Submarine, you idiot. Um, and he's trying to get away from the snake, and then that just cuts away from him. We don't know what happened until they decide they need to go to the well to get some drinking water. Yeah, so they run out of water in the house and I guess it happens often. So they go to the well to get some drinking water mm -hmm. and um, she's climbing down because the, um, like the, what do you call it? The bucket yeah. it fell because it had brought it. Because Harvey's fucking useless. <laughs> um, so she's walking down and she falls mm -hmm. into the well. This is where you see the heads. Yeah, there's there's a bunch of heads in the well and it, in it's pretty cool looking. And now this is where you're kind of realizing, oh, there's something shady going on here on the island. You yeah. Know, there really are people dying, and we're, we found their heads now. Well, then this other couple, they start getting into it a little bit. She leaves. She comes back, and he, he's laying there with his hands over his penis, you know, and she's like, just put that thing away. I'm not touching it. She slaps his hand, and you see his dick has been cut off. Um, something that just does not seem very fun, does not seem like something I would enjoy, and he's dead because... That's where your life is, in your penis. So when you mm -hmm. get it cut off, you're just dead. Mm -hmm. So, um, and then 
the friends come to try to find her and him. Yeah, and they walk into just blood all over. It's just a bloodbath. It's just there. a bloodbath. Mm -hmm. So they freak out, run to the next room, and pop that open real quick. And there's another one of their friends. He's been hanged. Mm -hmm. You know, he's just hanging out in that room. So they end up running to the basement for what I believe is one of your favorite scenes in the whole movie, if you want to talk about it. Yeah, so they're in the basement um, trying to, I guess, figure out what's going on. And they see a um, like a painting and you can see eyeballs behind it. And it's so creepy when they move the painting and it's just a uh, severed head. Yeah, a severed head. It just falls right into her hands. And um, it, it, it's cool how they cut the eyes out of the painting and put it it's, over her head. It's super creepy looking. Yeah. Well, then she runs upstairs. She's freaking out. Her boyfriend's been locked in another room. She walks in and everybody's just sitting there and she takes the knife and pushes it against her hands. April Fool's, the whole thing was just a huge April Fool's joke. Mm -hmm. And the reason, nobody was in on it no. until they got killed. And the reason she's doing this is because she wants to turn this place into a weekend bed and breakfast with like a mystery train sort of feel to it. Who's the killer? Yeah. What's happening here? And who better to try that out on? than her, her, friend? her best friends. Yeah. So, Which is kind of cool. Like I think I would do something like yeah, that. Yeah, that'd be totally sweet. Um, so then they're having their little end party and they have all the little um, fake heads and are drinking with them. And <laughs> The one guy's getting a little bit too sensual yeah. with the head. Because, you know, they're all goofballs. Right. Well, then she goes back to her room, you know, satisfied. Everything went according to plan. Someone grabs her hair and cuts her throat. She's feeling all the blood all over the place only to realize... April, April Fools. Fools. Um, so this movie ends with her throat getting slit on an April Fools joke. So those are a little bit of the scenes we liked from the original. Let's get into some of the things that we liked from the remake. Let's do it. So now we're going to be talking about the remake from 2008. Um, do you want to start us off with this one? Yeah. Um, so... The beginning, they're at like a party and a mm -hmm. chef's making some food and all of a sudden he cuts off his finger, like in, I mean, completely cuts yeah. it off. Um, and then you realize it's an April Fool's joke. Blaine put him up to it yep. to scare everybody else. Uh, the main character, Blaine, and his sister, Des, is really who the story focuses on. Um, now, they're trying to play a prank on this girl. It's a debutante ball is what it is. It's a coming out debutante ball. They're trying to play a prank on this girl and get her on tape sleeping with Blaine because apparently that's a prank that you do to people. I mean, she's super jealous of this this girl. Right. And, well, come to find out her drink has been drugged with roofies. She has a bad reaction to it. She falls off the balcony. Um, at this point, she, she dies after falling off the balcony. And they go to court and Blaine and uh, Des, our brother and sister, and mm -hmm. their, their parents have passed away. So the estate was all with Blaine. Well, he now loses control of the estate to Des, which really upsets him. Um, this is what he's wanted for so long to be in control of this estate. This whole thing's about money. So yeah. that's what's going on there. Um, so then it's like a year later um, after she had fallen off the balcony Milan. and died. Milan, Milan had fallen Milan. off the balcony. Yeah. Um, and they get a note to all meet at the gra at a grave site. At her, at her grave site, yeah. yeah. And it says on it, I have proof. It does, yeah. Well, on Des's way to the grave, she sees Milan walking across the street. Now, hold on. I thought she was dead. She fell off the balcony right in front of us, and she hit pretty hard, and there was blood everywhere. I, she mm -hmm. she had to be dead. And how there was, was a funeral. Yeah, how was Milan walking across the street? It's pretty suspicious. That is pretty suspicious. <laughs> um, So her and all of the, of the friends that were in the beginning that seen Milan die are at the gravesite, um, and they get like a package and mm -hmm. in the package there's a laptop and a note and it says if you don't come forward with who killed me milan mm -hmm. um then you're all gonna die one by one over the course of today mm -hmm. april fool's day um they don't believe this is real so on the laptop um, yeah. you see one of the guys being drowned at his house because he can't swim and he, he owns a pool he tries to save his dog yeah i was like and he's able to swim down Save the dog. Well, throw the dog to safety. The dog. It's the, not really yeah, the dog. Yeah, it's like a stuffed animal. Yeah. Throws it to safety, but then can't swim out. Yeah. And like, he owns a pool. A built-in pool, and he can't swim. 
It doesn't sound smart. Neither, it's not smart. Neither here nor there. <laughs> so they go to his house and they find him. He's purple. He's bloated. He's been drowned. Mm -hmm. uh, they try to save him or they try to, you know, get him in and they end up falling in the pool with him, which is pretty goofy in itself as well. So then, um, then they're like, well, he's dead. It's gonna, you know, come to the rest so of it's, us. It's, it's, they're split. Some of them believe it's happening. The others think that it's just a coincidence. There's nobody out to get them. Someone's just fucking with them. So they want to they wanna check on um, another friend. Mm -hmm. So they go to like a pageant thing. So yeah, she's in a beauty pageant. And um, she's in her room like getting ready. Um, and she gets electrocuted. Yeah, her curling iron electrocutes her. And then Des runs in and finds her electrocuted on the ground. Um, now, before we talk about Peter... Um, she goes to try to find Peter who's running Republican office mm -hmm. and me and Ashley rewound this part probably 10 times because this is the absolute best running sound effect we've ever heard in our entire lives. <laughs> I told you that is, am if I'm ever running from somebody, I'm totally just going to go. <laughs> and then, so obviously he gets hit by this van, his own van with his face on the side of it hits him. Des watches this whole thing. Well, now they go to their other friend, you know, hey, this is not good. Um, and then she ends up telling them, her name is Torrance. She's like, I'm filming a movie right now. I can't, you know, I'm, I'm here, I'm safe. So they find out that the package was sent from another friend's house. Mm -hmm. So they go to his house to kind of scope things out. Well, they're hiding from him in his apartment. And in probably, honestly, I, we'll talk more about this during the verses, but probably my favorite scene of the whole movie he walks in and he doesn't see him. And when he turns around, the person just jumps out and cuts his throat. Yeah. And I really genuinely think that this was a good little scare for me. Like, Yeah, I jumped. Yeah. And it was, the timing was perfect. The pacing was perfect at this part. The blood was great. It was one of my favorite parts of the whole movie was this part right here. Yeah. So let's get back to more of the parts we didn't like. <laughs> um. So they go back to their mansion and um, she walks in and her butler is dead and she's falls and slips on his blood yeah and she's laying there looking at him like oh my god he's dead she walks in the other room blaine's and they're tied up and she's like who did this to you well torrance comes walking up behind her with a gun um torrance is played magnificently in this mute movie one thing i could say about this movie we'll save that for the verses yeah. so we'll, we'll get to there in a minute yeah. but you realize now torrance is the killer she ties up des right next to blaine she has a blonde like blonde wig on mm -hmm. so she was trying to be yeah, the whole time Milan has been Torrance walk around. Torrance is the one that was the most upset when Milan died. She's the one that ran up and was holding her like, what did you guys do? And mm -hmm. they were looking up at the balcony. So, um, yeah. So now they're both tied up. But I got to say, though, the transition here is so stupid. Like, you see Des and Blaine. You see Torrance holding the gun. Then it just goes to black, comes back, and now Des is tied up next to Blaine as well. Yeah. Like, I just I didn't like this cut right here. Um, so Blaine gets shot. Mm -hmm. Um, she shoots him. Yeah. She walks up, shoots him because she keeps saying you don't have much time left. After she shoots him, Des finally admits she's the one that drugged Milan. She let Blaine take the fall because she wanted the estate. Mm -hmm. She didn't want Blaine to have the estate anymore. Um, at this point, Blaine just starts laughing. Um, and then he wakes up and every, all the dead friends come out and they're videotaping and taking pictures and, it's all been a big April Fool's joke. The gun had blanks in it. Um, no one's been hurt. And so now it's, yeah, the whole thing has just been to prove that Des murdered Milan to win the estate. Yeah. Um, and speaking of blanks, mm -hmm. um, Torrance is like, it's, it, you know, it's not real. And she shoots it and shoots Des in the head and kills her. Yeah. Another Which was like... Yeah, another scene where we were both like, oh, whoa, yeah. what the hell? Is she really, you know, and then Blaine's holding her and Torrance is like, what, you did this. He's like, that bullet could have hit me. What do you mean I did this? I couldn't have planned this. Right. Um, But he did. He um, totally did. You find out now that he planned the whole thing to get the estate back and you figure that out because he's driving away at the end of the movie and does his car and a smile comes across his face. So his plan went accordingly. Um, Torrance is found innocent of the murder because it was a you know whatever prank whatever yeah. whatever you know it's, they had to put that in there she's innocent she didn't get in trouble so um yeah that's pretty much the 2008 remake so let's get into our verses and what who wins the battle of april fool's day all right all 
All right, guys, let's get into the versus aspect of this. Um, so kind of like Child's Play, this, these two movies, there's not a lot that's similar. Right. Um, besides like the title. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we, we came up with a few, you know, things that we're going to verse, but, um, it, it's not like others. It was so. hard. It, it, it was hard. Because they are so on, they're, they're so different. Yeah. That it was hard to come up with a list. But we did come up with a couple, so. We got a few, so let's get into that. Okay. Um, the cast. Would you, per, do you prefer the cast from the original or the cast from the remake? Easily the original. Um, they seem genuine. They seem like they were friends. The thing about the remake is, listen, like Scott Taylor Compton, fantastic actress. I love her to death. Mm -hmm. But they were given roles that they were supposed to be shallow and shitty and make you hate them. And they did it. The actors were phenomenal because they made me hate every one of them and not give a shit about any of them if they died. So they did a great job. But we're talking about the characters themselves. And when it comes to the characters in the film, I have to give it to the original. They were so much fun and they were a blast to watch. And they had great chemistry. So what about you? Um, I'm going to go with the original as well for all of those things that you just said. Um it made me, you know, the characters in the original, you, you felt closer to them, like, because they seemed more like real people and they weren't fake right. and, you know, uh, going to stab you in the back or right. put roofies in your drink, you know? <laughs> so, um, yeah, I'm definitely going to have to go with the original. Mm -hmm. Well, let's talk about the story. Now the story in the original is you have a bunch of friends going out to a lake house for the weekend, mm -hmm. your little college getaway and a killer starts to attack and it's a whodunit or you have a person die and then they come back from the grave to take revenge on those who wronged them and killed them so of those two which story did you like better i like the original story better um again it's just more it's more fun i just thought it was more fun more believable too. it's more believable yeah and um i just i had a lot more fun with the story yeah yeah, it's the thing about the original is there was never a point in time where I looked at the clock, oh, hoping this movie would end, and that happened a couple different times with this remake. It did, it really so, did. I mean, in the story, in the first one, kept you entertained, kept you wondering, kept you guessing, not just like, oh, can we please just kill these fucking people and yeah, end this? Yeah, because who cares about these characters at this point? Right. So now we're talking about killing these characters. Let's talk about the kills. Do you prefer the kills from the original or the kills from the remake? So I'm gonna go with the remake kills. Um, don't get me wrong. There's some good ones in the original too, but, um, I guess like when he jumps out and he gets his, his, um, throat slit, that one was really cool. And I think that's why I'm going with the remake. Um, it, I guess it was kind of boring and up until like, you know, stuff like that happened. So when something like unexpected. that, yeah, when something like that happened, it, it like intensified it almost. Yes. And I, I'm actually going to agree. I'm going to go with remake here because in the original, there was actually no kills. In the remake, you had the throat cut, even though it wasn't a kill. Um, but then you did have the kill of Des getting her fucking head blown off. This is true. Yeah, so, that, which that one was a shock too. So, yeah. Yeah, so I'm, I'm going to go with the remake here as well. And I, I will say this, the throat cut, I think I already said this earlier, but that was my favorite part of the movie was the throat it, cut because it genuinely took us by surprise. Like yeah. It was very well done. So that is one thing that I will say that I really liked now. Let's talk about the motive. Okay. Now, the motive in the first one is she's got her friends out to this uh, um, house that she lives in so she can try to make it into a bed and breakfast as a whodunit weekend retreat type mm -hmm. thing. Or the remake where the brother plots this whole thing so he can frame his sister, or not frame her, but get her to come out and admit what she's done right. so he can retake over his estate. Um, I'm going to have to go with the original on this one also. Um, that how we talked about the story is funner and mm -hmm. um you know it you're just like what's happening is you know is this real yeah. and i i enjoyed the original more uh, me too um there's so much that had to fall in place for the remake to actually happen the way it was supposed to yeah and the original it, it's campy it's a fun campy slasher until the end when you realize there's been really no slashing mm -hmm. but it, it's a movie that we both very much enjoyed so when it, even the when you come to the motive of the whole thing i'm, I'm definitely going to stick with the original too what about the april fool's pranks original 
all the original. Whether it's the whoopee cushion, I'm a fart joke kind of guy. <laughs> um, the glasses, uh, finding the heroin things in his in his uh, mirror in the yeah. room. Um, finding all the sex stuff when they're in the room, like the masks and like the uh, S&M type stuff. Mm -hmm. So um, I, I, I got to give it to the original. I thought it was fun. It was clever. And I genuinely enjoyed a lot of the pranks they pulled in the original. I'm going to go with a remake on this one. Um, I really like the beginning where he gets, where he like, looks like he chopped his finger off. I thought that one was pretty good. Mm -hmm. Um, and then, uh, you know, her, um, him getting his throat That, cut, that was good. Um, him looking like he got shot in the end. Like they all look good and real and, and, and the other ones are silly and fun, but I, I like more of the gory, sure. gory type stuff. Okay, well now let's talk about the ending. Okay. Now, the original ends with her getting her throat cut, you know, and then mm -hmm. they, she laughs at her, didn't really cut her throat. Or the remake ends with Douchebag Blaine driving away smiling because he won. He, you know, he got his sister murdered so he could take back over his father's estate. Which ending did you like better? The original, hands down. Um, That, that ending with the remake, that's just cold-hearted like it's over money like your sister's dead because you wanted to claim and it wasn't even they both had part of the estate right it was just that, over who controlled it that wasn't good enough for either one of them clearly right um and you know and everything that took place like he has it now she has it and you know going back and forth and i just it, it who gives who cares? a shit who cares yes. about any of this or these characters right um but I really like the original, um, how she, you know, she's surprised and then she, you know, you get the throat cut and yeah. she, she's like, you're really she, thinking that she got her throat yeah, cut. Yeah, well, because moment. she's feeling, yeah. you know, her neck and then, and then you see the smirk on, on the, the girl's girl. face. Yeah. yeah. I love that. Yeah, me too. So for those of you keeping track at home, we had six questions. I am giving five points to the original and one to the remake. Um, four for the original and two for the remake for me. Okay. So before we get out of here, which one was your favorite of the two? Now I scored better for the child's play remake, but the original is my favorite of the two. So did the remake come out on top here for you over the original? No. <laughs> <laughs> um, hands down, um, the original has my vote for sure. Um, it, it's fun. Like you said, it's campy. Mm -hmm. You can relate to the characters. They're silly. Um, they make you laugh genuinely. Yeah. Whereas the remake, you're like, fuck these people. Is this fucking over yeah. yet? Like how many times are we going to look at the clock? Like, yeah. and you keep saying, sorry, I'm making you watch this. <laughs> I know. I did say that so many times. Um, but I'm also going to go with the original for the same things you said, as well as it was just so for that time, so ingenious yeah. for them to play this off. And it did have genuine scares, like the part with the eyes in the painting. Yeah, yeah, you know? that genuinely freaked me out. Yeah, so that was another really good scene. So there was a lot to come along with the original that I will stand by, and I love that movie so much. Um, not only do I like it more than the remake, it's probably one of my favorite slashers from the 80s in general. So um, we appreciate you guys coming out so much, and I hope you enjoyed this. If you haven't already, make sure you hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, so you can come along with us for the ride. Our next episode in May, we'll be on the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. So yes. I'm very excited about that one. We're going to have very differing opinions on that one as well. So I don't know. I um, don't know. We'll see. Tune in to find out. Until next time, I'm Ken Sledge. And I'm Ashley Sledge. Keep talking horror. Stay who you are. And we'll see you guys soon. Bye, guys.